Hey guys, Jason Creel here with you're watching the Lawn Care Life. This is my friend Tim. He's got a local lawn business and I wanted you to check out his lawn care setup because sometimes, you know, when you're riding around town and you notice all the guys' equipment, Tim's equipment stands out. It's really sharp, a good setup. So I thought it would be helpful for you guys that are looking for a setup for one, two, maybe even three people. So we're going to talk to Tim about his equipment. Stay tuned. All right, Tim, so we're under a tree here, so the, the lighting is optional, right. but we're looking for the content mostly. But so you got, let's check out this mower here. This is an Xmark Radius. Uh, looks like, is this a 48 inch mower? It is, and it's the Egg Series. It's got the suspension seat, um, and I've also got this uh, advanced chute added to it as well. Um, that just kind of keeps debris from coming out of the discharge up against houses and flower beds. Um, I bought the uh, the one that Xmark made and they put it on. I wasn't real happy with it. These guys at Advanced Shoot, they do a really good job um, setting this all up. So I really enjoy that. Have so. you had a mulch kit on it before? Have you compared that with using a mulch kit or have you always had like a, a shoot block? I've, uh, no, I haven't run a mulch. I've always had yeah. the shoot blocker, but the Xmark one, it was made of plastic. It was $500. This one is only two. And it's made of metal. You can see how thick this is. I mean, nothing's going anywhere. The, yeah. uh, the handle that operated the X Mark one was on a really thin bracket. So when you worked it, the whole bracket bent over. And I, I really wasn't pleased with it yeah. at all. So I told them to take it back off. And then I went with another. I had already had one of these before on a different mower. And so I just went ahead and got another one. So. The much much better quality yeah way better made what would you say about the the x mark radius uh, is a 48 inch is that seem to be a good versatile size for you and and how have you enjoyed this mower so far it is you know my first one was a 60 inch uh you know i went into the place with my man feelings hanging out and i got the 60 but it ended up being a disaster because uh, I couldn't get into really small places. So I changed the make of the mower and I downsized it to a 48. And now I can squeak in and out of places that I couldn't fit in before. And I'd have to cut with the walk behind. So now, you know, I've cut my time down yeah. anymore. I mean, everybody in this business knows that speed is, is yeah. money. You know, the faster you can get in and out. And I like having the X series. I know one of the features is that better seat, which you right. mentioned that to me, that's worth a little oh, bit yeah. extra money. So. A rough yard will beat you to yeah. death. So what kind of engine is on this mower? It's the Kawasaki um, and it's a good motor. I like it. Uh, I had a Kohler on my last mower and to me, it was a lot louder. Uh, yeah. This one runs really quiet. Uh, I haven't had any issues with it at all, but you know, I've only got a couple of hundred hours on it so far, but I, I mean, I love this lawnmower, man. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great running machine. Let so. me take a look at your trailer. Just All right, we're going to check out the trailer here. Tell me about the trailer. How, how, how big of a trailer do you have this thing on? This is a 14 by 7 uh, custom made. I called Laramore and had to make this thing uh, to my specs. I didn't want the, uh, the round railing. I wanted the square railing. So, uh, and it's single axle. So I can't really haul mulch or anything on it, but it's a good trailer. I, I, I enjoy it. Did they put that box on the tongue for you or did you do that? I did that. That box is from Harbor Freight and it cost 80 bucks. And it, you can lock it up if you want. And it actually had a shock. This has been on here a year or two. And it had a shock that, that uh, would hold it in place, but the rivet broke at the top. So, but I mean, it's riding behind the yeah. truck, so it stays shut anyway. So. I got gotcha. you. All right, let's go here and look at your uh, your trimmers. All right, we're going to talk about his trimmer setup. You got a uh, first. Tell me about the rack you're using, and then we'll talk about uh, the you've got an edger and a couple of trimmers. Tell me what brands you're using and how you like them. So this rack is uh, the version two of the Green Touch. Um, I had a version one, uh, and one of the mechanisms that locked this. Uh, failed to operate anymore and the guys at green touch are awesome they sent me a brand new version two uh with a return label for the other one because they wanted to see how the mechanism was not uh functioning correctly and so they gave me this version two uh for free uh i love this thing because the the trimmers they don't roll over they don't flood out you know they all stay upright and the supports on this version two that's a one by one aircraft aluminum with this arm and then on the back side here, I don't know if you can see this, but it's this huge support in the back. So the Red Max is a little bit taller and thinner than the steels are. 
and so I had to cut a little bit of this off because if you raise this or if you lowered this all the way down the tail of this wouldn't fit under the red max I got you and so if I brought it all the way in it just wouldn't work so I had to take some off of here and off of here so this engine support this rack is specifically for okay. a red max so, so so you got a red max uh, i've got a red max, red max a trimmer fs 130 mm -hmm. and then under this what's uh, in the, the hit under the, the hood back. is a uh, a steel uh edger as well and okay. I, I like these uh trimmer hoods and the reason i run these is because this one in particular uh had taken in some water when i got caught in the rain and uh, I had to have it rebuilt and, and it's happened twice. I had to have the carburetor rebuilt. So I started running these hoods for when I get caught in the rain and they're, they're actually fantastic. But um, the day after I got these in, I realized Green Touch also makes these, huh. but they are actually are insulated. So you can put them on the machine right after you run it. So that's a, that's a really good feature that I like, but it was, I had already purchased these. Um, they were $20 a piece. So and you like the both the, the trimmer, which which is your go-to? You like the steel or the Red Max or you They've both got their different attributes. So the Red Max, the reason that I bought this one is I I needed a second trimmer, but I didn't want to pay the price for the steel. You know, these steels are kind of pricey, but this steel I can put a brush blade on and I can bust saplings, you know, this big around all day long with with this one. But this one is really light, it runs really good. Um, and you can use this all day long. So this one's a little more versatile, but uh, I like running this one during the day. If I'm just gonna do some edging and weed eating, I'll run this Red Max, cause it's really light and it's a really good, and it's actually the, uh, I think the uh, BCZ 230TS. Okay. Which is uh, their bottom commercial one. So it's a, it's yeah. a good trimmer. All right, talk, let's talk about your blower here. You got you have got the the big steel BR seven hundred. Now, it, did you have a steel before that and upgraded that, or did you switch from a different brand? I switched from a Husqvarna to this, and this thing. And I've tried some Echoes too. I, I actually tried an Echo the other day. I, I really like this one. It's got a it's got a lot of power. You can actually feel the motor on the back of this thing torquing over when you're hitting the throttle, and it's got good quick throttle response. It's got an adjustable tube. So you can slide this in when you're blowing out flower beds. You can blow leaves and stuff with this thing in and it doesn't catch all of the pine straw or mulch really hard. You know, you kind of back it off a little bit and then you can bring it back out. So um, I really like it. It's a nice one. It's uh, I think they run about 650, somewhere around in there. So, and this is a green touch rack as well. And it locks everything up. It's got this bar you slide through right here, right through the back of the, back of the blower. And, uh, and you take it off, you can set this thing up or down, get it out of the way when you don't have a blower on it. But you know, it's the thing with me is, is if you can keep one person from stealing any of your gear, this stuff is worth it. And I'm sure everybody out there knows somebody or it's happened to them that they had a piece of equipment stolen when they cost this kind of money, you know, it's, not not something easily afforded so yeah all right let's take a look at your push mower real quick all right first how much how much pushing do you do i mean is this you kind of you know well, i know some pe some people have a, a lot of some people have a, a commercial push mower i always thought you know if i was doing a lot of pushing maybe that's worth it but i, I tried not to push if i didn't have to I, uh, I avoid it at all costs. I'm going to tell you that, uh, you know, but I have people that would prefer the smaller lawnmower. They don't like the tracks that the big one makes in it or someone who got out there before when it was too wet and tore it up. So now they don't want you out there anymore. So I just bought this. I think this thing costs, you know, five, 600 bucks. And it's the Honda Quad Cut. I bought it at uh, Northern Tool. And it does really good. It starts really easy. It's got the blade shut on and off. The only thing I don't like about this lawnmower is these tires are plastic. And so you can see, I've only got about probably 15, 20 hours on this thing. And they're already almost worn off. So the answer to this is, is you go to Walmart or you find an old mountain bike tire and you cut the tread out of it, just the center tread, and get some one inch wood screws and just wrap it around the tire and put wood screws in it. And I actually have another one that's in the shop right now 
uh, getting some maintenance done on it. We call it the Billy Goat because once you put those rubber tires on there, that thing will go anywhere. Okay. So it's fantastic. Man, don't your neighbors know we're shooting a video over here and they can't they don't wait care. and cut their grass away? <laughs> Which is funny because that guy never cuts his grass. <laughs> um, and I got uh, the line trimmer too, so. Yeah. All right. Um, what I like about Tim, Tim shoots you straight. He tells you what he likes, what he doesn't like, and just shooting from the hip on exactly, um, you know, his experience with his equipment. Tim, there's a lot of people that watch the videos that are starting in the lawn business. If you could just give them one piece of advice to guys that are starting off, what, what's been your advice to uh, guys starting, you know, a new lawn care business? Oh, man. Golly. You know, take your time don't try to make it all happen at once and helpers you're gonna have trouble finding help that that's my biggest issue is finding good help yeah. you know you can I mean you can find people to show up it's no telling what kind of state they'll be in but uh you know I, I enjoy this man I like cutting grass you know um, I jumped from a full-time job to this and uh, I was a little worried about it but it just slowly progresses so you know if you do a good job you know, people have you come back, and then the next thing you know, word of mouth. Um, I started, I think I had 30 yards to start with. Now I'm coming up on 100, um, and that's, you know, just me and one other helper. So that's, you know, it's not bad. Um, you know, and we've got a box truck now, so we're, we're you know, slowly moving forward. So, you know. Well, thanks to Tim for showing off his lawn care setup. He's really got a great setup for, uh, like I said, a one or two person crew and he's very honest about his opinion on equipment and knowledgeable and so i really appreciate tim joining us today if you haven't done so subscribe to the channel let me hear your thoughts on tim's setup what do you like about it what do you not like and what are your equipment preferences and i'd love to hear from you in the comments check out these suggested videos thanks a lot